today because, wow, what a prayer, y'all. What a prayer. God is doing great things, and um, he's doing great things in this Sunday school class. Uh, please remember the Kurt Mason family in your prayers. Um, they, he was a young dad that, that they buried to, today, I believe. Um, his son was in baseball with Seth many years ago, and um, it's just so sad, so tragic. We don't know how he passed. It was a sudden death, unexpected. So um, please keep them in your prayers, the Mason family. All right, so we've been in Galatians chapter 5, still talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Well, um, Galatians 5.22 basically is where we had started previously. But today I just want to do a little bit of a different introduction, okay? Um, the church, I want to kind of give you a little history about what was going on in Galatia, all right? The people of Galatia, they didn't think the, that the grace of God was good enough, all right? Anybody ever felt like that? It's, it's too easy. Anybody ever felt like, you know, this grace thing is just too easy? How, and, and that's what they were feeling in Galatia. They were saying, they were asking questions like, you know, it's, it's not punishing enough, it's, um, it's too easy. It's not oppressive enough, the grace of God. Um, they, they didn't have to go beg a priest to intercede for their sins. They didn't have to buy a perfect animal anymore and sacrifice it. And Paul was telling them all that that had been replaced by grace and that they were going to have to get their flesh in check. See, that was what was happening. They were saying, Paul was saying, you need to stop all this works of the flesh, guys. And, and they were like, well, why can't we just go buy another animal to sacrifice? The easy way. You know, um, so I, if I want to go, you know, basically they're just saying, can't we just go back to killing animals? You know, I, I don't want to keep myself under control. If I want to beat my wife or go on a three-day bi drinking binge like I did before, all I had to do was bring an animal and sacrifice it. This is hard. Why you want to make it? You know, grace is hard. And, and Paul was saying, no, grace. That was what we did before was oppressive. And what you're doing now, all you have to do is couple your faith with grace and the Holy Spirit. And you can overcome these things. But see, they were looking at it through the lens of the old way. All right. Basically, they were saying kind of like what people say today. Why can't my outward holiness be enough? Why can't I just look the part and it be okay? Come on, somebody. I know I'm hitting on something. Why can't I just look the part? Why do I have to get myself under control? Why do I have to change? People don't like change. They don't like, they don't like to be told uh, what their flesh needs to do, right? So we've got to learn how to grow in grace. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to talk to the camera. I'm going to talk to people that might be watching this because I know they do. I know they watch it, and I know they talk about us, and they say that we've compromised and we've done this and that. And you know what? It's okay. I know what we feel every single Sunday. I know that how the Holy Ghost comes in and overtakes this place, and it just takes us into the third heaven. Just amazing. And, and we... <laughs> You know, they say God is not in the ark. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> we can't fake our fruit, folks. And that's what this is all about. This is about the fruit of the Spirit. And fruit takes work. Fruit is results. Fruit is saying, no, you can't, you know, you can't be fake anymore. You can't just live it on the outside. You need to be transformed on the inside by the Holy Ghost. You need to let the Holy Ghost transform you. You need to, to grow. You, you know, that's what they were doing in, in Galatia. They were just saying, ah, why can't we just go back to sacrificing animals? You know, so they were trying to bring back the stuff that was easier to their flesh. Nobody challenged their behavior before. Nobody challenged them with their false balances and cheating on their taxes and cheating on their wife. And nobody challenged them when they beat their wife. 
Nobody challenged them when they did those things. And Paul's Holy Ghost words were challenging their spirits. So, it, you know, the fruit of the Spirit doesn't just happen. You can't buy the fruit of the Spirit. It takes work, and it takes getting yourself under control. You can't just switch it on and switch it off. Exactly. You know, this, this whole thing of conference culture where they just go and cry and, you know, jump up and down. And, and you know, the Holy Ghost does move. I'm not going to say it doesn't. But what do you do when you walk out that door? It doesn't, that, that jump and that conference culture doesn't sustain you. It doesn't keep you in the way you should be. So that's why fruit is so important. That's why we've got to have the Holy Ghost. I want you to turn, you've got to have tools, folks. We've been talking a lot about tools, talked a lot about tools in the marriage workshop. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to start with verse 1. And I want you all to read it aloud with me. This is a participation okay, class. Okay, So Ephesians, chap, Ephesians 2 and 1 is where we're going to start. Ephesians 2 and 1, and we're going to go down to verse 6, all right? And I don't think I have a runner with a, a microphone today to do, uh, so we're just, if y'all could, we will do, I will do my best to convey anything that you might say so that the people on camera can hear it, but if you can, just maybe save that to the end and we'll do that. <clears throat> okay, so Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, he said here, and again, he's having to remind the Ephesian church the same thing he was having to remind the, the Galatian church. That it's, it's not going to do you any good to look the part anymore. You've got you to gotta get your inside right. All right? So look at Ephesians 2 and 1, and let's read that together, would you? Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, mm, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had converse, our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But, everybody say, but God. But God, look at that, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. What does he say here? By what? By grace are ye saved. All right. So, and it says, verse 6, he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he reminded them, you did used to walk after your flesh. And you, it was sufficient to just bring an animal before, but that's not going to work now. It's going to take work on your part. God took the responsibility off the animal and put it on the person. Because it was an easy thing. Think about it. It didn't matter what you did. You just brought your animal and said, hey, but, you know, sometimes they had to beg the priest because some of the priests were worse off than they were. Some of the priests were acting up and acting in ways that were just horrible. And that's why the Lord said, you know, i got to fix this. i got to come and show them the better way. All right, and that's what he did. Aren't you grateful for that but God? Aren't you thankful for that but God? I know I am so thankful for that but God. So... We talked about, um, again, Ephesians 5 and 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by what? The word. Ephesians 5 and 26. You can write that down. We've got to do what Ephesians 5, 26, 6 says. We have to be sanctified and cleansed by the washing of the water by the word. All right. So we talked last week about how that, and of course, Corinthians, we went over that. And we're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit here in just a minute. Um, but Corinthians, Paul told them, if you don't have love, you've got nothing. If you don't have love, you're a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You are just having a conference culture. 
making a lot of noise, you know, weeping and wailing and crying and going right back to being mean as a junkyard dog. There's something wrong with that. And we talked about love and how you can't really love a person, you can't really serve a person that you don't love. And Jesus came to love and serve, love and serve, love and serve, love and serve. That was what he did. In fact, he even got down and washed his disciples' feet. He served them. He left that as our example. Um, So we have to remember in that fruit of the Spirit, because we, somebody want to read the fruit of the Spirit that we talked about? Uh, Well, we don't have a mic, do we? All right, let me go back. Let me go back, and I will do it. Um, Because I really want to remind you, because we went over all the works of the flesh, and we talked about them in great detail. Now we're going to be talking in great detail about the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, rather. That is what we seek. That is what we need. Galatians 5 and 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. All right, so there's no law against these things because these are all good things. These are all things that add to. These are all things that edify and build up and help us. So we're going to continue to break those things down. We talked a little bit about love last week, and we're going to continue to talk about love today. Um, I grew up extremely poor, okay? We We were very, very poor, all right? So when I say that, there wasn't food a lot of times. If we didn't grow it, we didn't eat it. So there were there were times that we, you know, there were seven of us, seven children, so there were nine people in the house in a single wide mobile home, and we were stacked on each other like cordwood. It's when that neighbor named Ms. Dot, and I will never forget her. Um, Bishop knows I'm talking about Mike Vassar's mother. She lived on top of the hill right beside where we lived. And she was so precious. And she lived by herself. She was elderly. And I will never forget the love that she showed to our family and the kindness that she showed to our family. Um, She was always sending us seven kids cookies and goodies and things at Christmas and we just demolished it like we had never had anything like that in our lives. And it, it really was a blessing. Um, and if my mother, we, d- we never had a phone hardly ever growing up. Uh, we didn't have air conditioning. So and we, if we had to cut our own wood. So y'all's uh, bishop's wife is very, uh, prev- very good at splitting wood. You might not know that about me. But I can do it. I've done it. And... And um, anyway, but this lady, she had a telephone, and anytime my mother had to make an appointment for somebody or needed something from our granddaddy, she would always go to her house and use the phone. And mother felt guilty about asking anything from Miss Dot. And um, and I could tell that Miss Dot picked up on that. And I was just a young child at the time. But as, as I grew older, I could see that Miss Dot would do things that were very sweet. She would come in because there would be times when my mother would have to ask her for potatoes or eggs. She didn't ask for a lot, but she would, when, when we were just down to nothing, she would go and ask. And I remember Miss Dot every so often would come over, and she would just kind of make her way. She didn't walk very easily, but she would come to our door, and she would ask for things like rubbing alcohol or salt because she knew we probably had that because that was dirt cheap, all right? And she wanted to be so kind. She was showing so much kindness because she knew how it made my mom feel to have to ask for anything. I'm sorry. I didn't really think I would get emotional, but I, here I am. And so she, was, she would come to the door and she would say, yeah, just ran out of salt and I really need salt and she probably hadn't run out of salt but she was just trying to make us feel better about all the times that we had to ask her to use her phone or ask her for sugar or ask her for whatever so 
that is a fruit of the Spirit that was working. That was a fruit of the Spirit that Miss Dot had. She was so kind. So sometimes serving people, what it looks like is protecting their dignity. That's a fruit of the Spirit. That's serving someone with love and that you want to protect how they feel on the inside. That's love, folks. Okay? So that's what the church is supposed to be. That's, what, that's who we are supposed to be. You know, this thing of going and helping somebody and, and oh, I'm helping this person. See me on Facebook helping this person. That's not love. That's attention. That's attention grabbing. And so we have to recall... Um. <coughs> all right. Remember what I said about yesterday. <laughs> all right. That those of the marriage workshop would have heard heard that. But we need to be a Miss Dot when it comes to things like that. Um, we need to remember their heart as well as their need. Um. So that that is just a, a fruit that we need to show as the church. Um. That don't need to be an announcement that you're helping somebody yes please uh, can you come get this mic and say it that would be great because that that I really want this I'm sure it's going to be great uh, something that the Lord's kind of shown me here recently is that um, everybody knows the story of Martha and Mary um, is that I tend to get in a Martha Martha mode where I want to do, 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 make sure everything's right, make sure everything's going okay. That, that's, that's my natural is to just do and work. And, and sometimes I forget to slow down and stop with the, in, in Mary's, it was the worship. But what that was was her outpouring of love. And sometimes I focus more on doing the doing, the doing, the going, the making, the, the being, the serving, and forget about the love part. So when she just said, when we serve somebody, we've got to remember the inside, their heart as well. That registered with me because the Lord just this week was like, you know, yes, it's 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 great that you're doing doing, but don't forget who you're doing it for and what you're doing it and what you're doing it for. Yes. So a lo- those of us that tend to to want to do the serve 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 work 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 go 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 get 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 make sure everybody's okay. That's great, but we got to balance that with the love part as well and making sure we're we're sh- we're showing them love and we're not just here you go you know and um make sure we have a good balance of serving that was so good so good so good and and all of us have to be reminded on a regular basis these things we talked about joy last week and how that we need to have joy in every circumstance and every situation and if your joy is based on temporal things then you're always going to have to have those temporal things to have joy. All right, but so we're going to talk about peace today. We've talked about love and we've talked about joy, and we're going to talk about peace a little bit. How many of you have ever been in a, in a, a season of life that you were just like, all I want is peace right now. I don't care about anything else. Just give me peace. Just give me peace. I've been in that state, especially lately, division and we've to get back to saying I don't care who you're voting for I don't care what your political persuasion is I love you regardless I love you and I don't even care who you're voting for it's irrelevant to me I love you and we've got to get back to that you know, one of the presidential front runners, Kennedy, was talking about that. I shared it on Facebook. He was like, we're ruining our country, and we're, we're showing our children this division. And it's, he said it's the worst that it's ever been in his life, and it's the worst I've ever seen in my life. So we've got to remember that we've got to bring harmony. We've got to bring calmness. In, you can go into a work situation where people are just thrashing on Christians and thrashing on you know the good things of, of God or thrashing on whatever, 
And you can walk into that, and you can bring peace and calm into that. You can bring harmony into that in just five minutes. You can just look at them and say, you know what? I don't care what's going on. I love you. And I'm not letting anything affect that. I, I don't even care what's going on in your world. I don't even care what's going on in your circumstance, in your situation. I love you. You can, you literally disarm people when you love them and they're just being nasty and rude and what you completely just, they don't know what to do with it. The devil doesn't know what to do with it. So it just kind of silences them every time. I've done it. I've watched it work. And, and that's where we, we have to be as the church. We have to bring peace. Y'all, I've said this a thousand times. It's not enough to be a peacekeeper. You've got to be a peacemaker. And when you can go into a chaotic situation and make peace, you can establish peace. When you can establish peace where there's chaos, where there's dis disunity, where there's lack of harmony, that means that it's, it's, and again, it's not us doing it. It's the Holy Ghost through us doing it, all right? So it's the Spirit doing the work, but it, we're, it just happens to be used in our mouth, and it happens to be used in our body, and it happens to be used in our mind. So we have to bring the mind of the Spirit into every circumstance and situation. And that comes from trust in the grace and the power of God. That is grace in action, that is total grace in action. So that's what we need to, you want to write those things down. You can bring grace into, you can bring peace into a terrible situation. Um, I can remember when all, you know what, was breaking loose. And I felt peace in the middle of it. I remember when our trials started seven years ago. I remember when it happened six, six and a half years ago. And I was rocking little Asher, who was about four pounds at the time. I was in my bedroom rocking him in the rocking chair. And I knew that what was coming was not good. And I said, Lord, it just, it's just like all of a sudden peace just washed over me. It was like the Lord said, I've got you. I know your heart. I know who you are. And it doesn't matter what people say about us or our church or whatever. It doesn't matter. I know what we experience. And I also know who they come to for prayer. Come on, somebody. So um, <clears throat> I will never forget a story that I read. And this was a true story. Uh, I believe it, ha it was one that I heard. Um, you know how sometimes on those Saturday morning news things, they will have something, something positive something good and I heard this it's been years ago many years ago when they could still talk about things like this and it wasn't against the uh was the cancel culture law all right but I remember a story of a little old lady um, named Marla and she was about to go into a nursing home um she was she didn't have any other family that could take care of her, so she was alone in the world. She had outlived all of her family. She didn't have children. She didn't have grandchildren. She didn't have anybody, no nieces, no nephews. Okay, so <clears throat> she was going into this nursing home for the first time because she could no longer live in her own home due to her condition, and she was led into the nursing home room next to a blind woman uh, who the attendants told her was very angry and very bitter. Okay, so she, here comes Marla into the room where this very angry, bitter, blind woman was. And she would sit there every day, Marla would, and she would tell this, this bitter, blind woman about how beautiful it was outside. And she would just say, oh, my goodness, it's, it's this time of year, and, oh, the flowers are gorgeous, and it's absolutely beautiful. And then someday she would say, oh, look at the children playing outside. They're just having such a good time. 
and she would tell this, this bitter blind woman about it, and she would say, you know, oh, look at the trees turning. Oh, they're so beautiful, their colors. And she would spend the whole day describing these colors to this bitter blind woman. And then she would say, oh, what day is it? Oh, it's spring. Oh, you should see the little birds outside, the baby birds and the mama birds. And she would just go into detail about the the trees are budding and the flowers are starting to bloom. And she just all day, every day entertained this bitter blind woman with all these stories and all these things of joy and peace. And she said it, it... And one of the nurses came in and asked her one time, why do you sit here and tell her all these stories? And she said, because it brings peace. It brings me peace. And it brings me joy. So one day, the angry blind woman started asking for Marla. And Marla had been taken away because she passed away in the middle of the night. And so the angry blind woman said, well... (laughs) Well, now I don't have anybody that's going to tell me what's going on outside. I don't have anybody that'll tell me about the children playing and the colors. And the confused nurse looked at her and said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, Marla would tell me every day about all the things going on outside. She would tell me about all the trees and the flowers and the birds and all of that. She said, honey, Marla was blind from the time she got here. She said, as a matter of fact, you don't even have a window in your room. She was speaking peace into the heart of a bitter blind woman. And they said that after that happened, that the bitter blind woman wasn't bitter anymore. And the next person, the next blind person that they brought into her room, she would sit there and she would say, oh, it's beautiful outside today. Oh, you should see the children playing. It's what's in her in your heart. You, she didn't have to do that, but she did. And Marla got peace from bringing joy to somebody else that was in the same state she was in. So we can do that as the church. We can bring hope and we can bring peace, and we can bring joy, and we can bring love. And it took love for Marla to do that. Because if you've ever been to a nursing home where you saw someone who was bitter and someone who was not happy to be there and let everybody know they weren't happy to be there, okay, you know what that's like. I know what that's like. So it doesn't matter what circumstance the person is around you that they're in. You can bring peace. You can bring joy. You can bring everlasting joy. It changed that bitter blind woman's life. And, and I, I just, I was so thankful that I heard that story. I also heard of another lady who was going into a nursing home, and they said, um, okay, she was also blind. And they said, okay, here's where this is, and we, here, you're going to have to do this, and, and here's where everything is. And she said, I love it. I just love it. And they said, well, you can't even see it. How can you love it? She said, because I just love it. I just love the fact that I'm going to be around people. I just love being here. I'm so thankful for you, the attendants. And those attendants would all fight to get that lady's room. They would all be like, okay, I want her. I want her today. Because then they were going in other people, uh, other people's rooms who were bitter and sad and lonely and angry. And they just... So we have, an, we have a choice every day. We have a choice to, to bring unity and harmony where there is none. We have a choice to be a peacemaker. We need to be peacemakers, y'all. How many of you are going to, let's just lift our hands right now. Why don't we, I feel the Lord in this place. Can we lift our hands together right now and can we pray and ask God to, Lord, make us peacemakers. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that if there is a root of bitterness inside of me, God, let me leave it at the altar this morning. In fact, let me leave it right here on this table in front of me. Lord Jesus, help me, God, to be a peacemaker. Help me to make peace where there is no peace. Help me to go into family situations where there is turmoil and there is bitterness and division 
division, God, where there's unforgiveness, God, I pray, Lord, right now that you would make me a peacemaker. Give me the boldness, God. Give me the courage, Lord, to speak up. Give me the courage to go against the grain and speak up and take back unity and take back peace and take back harmony and love. Help me to be a peacemaker in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe he's going to do it. And I believe that you have what it takes to do it. So the next, pe- the next uh, gift of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, rather, I keep talking about gifts of the Spirit, but this is a fruit of the Spirit because fruit takes time. Fruit t- takes patience. So we've gone through love, joy, and peace, and now we're talking about long-suffering. And that's what nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to suffer long, right? I don't want to suffer long. And anybody that says they do want to suffer long, something's wrong with you. I love you, but it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. But this forbearance is patience, and you can write this down. Forbearance, that's what we're talking about, long-suffering. is called forbearance. It is patience under provocation. It is patience in spite of being provoked, in spite of being talked about, in spite of being lied on, in spite of being all of those things. And that's why I speak to the people on the camera that are out there railing on our church, saying God's not here. It's okay. Come, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come one time. Just come once. Come once and you will see that Satan fights against those that are doing right. So it, forbearance is patience under provocation. This is when you can maintain your integrity when somebody else is attacking you. You maintain your integrity. You just say, it's okay, I love you anyway. It's all right, God's going to bless. I pray that God will help you to see a different way. So it's patience under provocation, all right? It's patience and fortitude, and come on, let's write this word down. It is restraint, okay? It is holding back that That little snapback is holding back your two cents. You know, your two cents is not going to help somebody go to heaven. It's it's not going to add value to the situation. So forbearance and long-suffering is restraint. If you can still maintain your integrity when you're being actively provoked. How many of you have seen the the movie called A Man Called Otto? Okay, there's a little bit of language in it, but for the most part, it was a very clean movie. I I think there was language in it, was there? I don't remember. Anyway, um, but we saw it, and it was a true story. It was based on a true story of a man, I believe in Switzerland, I think it was, it was one of the countries far away, it was, not, it was not America, and there was a little pregnant neighbor that came in, and she was a Hispanic neighbor, um, and she came in with her little kids, and here's Otto, Otto is a man who's lost his wife, he's also autistic, okay, so he's, he's different, his, the way he processes things is different. He has a routine. He has, everything has to be so perfectly aligned. And anything that's not perfectly aligned in his home, he, it just sets him off. He doesn't know what to do. It just freaks him out a little bit. And here comes this little Hispanic lady and her husband. And she is absolutely precious. She is big and pregnant. And she goes over and she's talking to him in her broken English. And it's hilarious. She is so sweet. And, and every time he is, she, he is mean to her, she's kind to him. 
And every time he claps back about her kids and, get, you know, this cat and the dogs and all this stuff, and she's like, oh, Otto, let me bring you food. Let me bring you food. And she brings him food, her favorite thing, and it's absolutely delicious because he sits down and, and he's just like, you know. And he, she, she hands it to him and he slams the door in her face. And she's like, okay, I'll be back tomorrow, you know. She just goes and she makes him cookies because she's just a happy person. It's just precious. And, and, and to know that it was a true story, it took so long for her, but she kept saying, I'm going to break him down. I'm going to break him down. And, and the husband was so patient. He didn't go over and clobber him like a lot of husbands would want to do. Um, he taught her how to drive. It was, it was adorable. It was absolutely adorable. So she literally broke him down every day until he began to do things like, well, let me fix this for you. And she's like, oh, I told you, you don't need to do. He said, no, I, I want to do that. I need to do this. I, I got to do this. You let me do this, you know. And so by the end of the movie, at the beginning of the movie, he was trying to commit suicide because he'd lost his wife. He was he had set up a chair and he was but he but he put plastic down under the chair so it wouldn't make a mess. I mean that was just his mindset. So here he is and he's putting the plastic down, he puts the chair and he gets the rope and he tries to do this and and all of a sudden she's knocking on his door. And she won't stop. She's just relentless and he's like I can't even do this, you know. So he takes the thing off, gets down and goes sees to see about her. He actually tried a couple of times. He tried a couple of things. And so she just she was just stubborn with her love to him. And the kids were stubborn with their love to him. And by the end of, toward the end of the movie, he was already going on vacation with them. You know, it, they, just, they just adopted him as their, as their strange granddad. And it shows the very end. I, won't, I don't want to give it away. But they saved his life from their kindness, from their love, from their being stubborn with being a peacemaker. She was like, I'm going to win this man. And so that is what we have to have. I, I really think it would be a, it, you'll, you'll be glad you watched it if you do. But we have to show that long-suffering. And that to me was just the best example of long-suffering that I'd seen in a long time. The next thing that we are talking about is the fruit of the Spirit is kindness, gentleness, kindness. So to be tender-hearted and to be sensitive to the needs of others and compassionate and merciful and loving justice and hating injustice and sin while showing love to others no matter what they are, where they are at in life. If you love the drug addict that that mean person, the person that's railing on you all the time. Now, I want to tell you, I want to in interject this here. There are going to be people in your life that no matter what you do, you can't please them. And you can't make an idol out of trying to please them. And you can't make an idol out of trying to change their mind about you. You can't make an idol of trying to fix quote, unquote, the person that's abusive, you're never going to fix them. It's going to take the Holy Ghost, all right, and a lot of it, and it's going to take their willingness to be fixed. So let me just inject that, and, and let me just say, I pray that God releases you from that desire to please that person and that you turn that to pleasing God instead, okay, that you stop making an idol and so many people feel like they have to do and they have to do this and they have to do that in order to get the love from that person. And that person, it won't matter what you do. They're never going to love you. They're never going to show you kindness. They're never going to be what you need them to be. So I pray God releases you from that so that you can love yourself. That's important. If we can love all the people in the world, and if we still don't love ourselves, it's going to come through. It's going to show. All right? So we also need to love ourselves enough to say, I do deserve kindness back. And, and if I'm going to go to someone constantly, if they don't change, 
if you are loving them and you are pouring into them and they don't change. You know what? You release that person to God. And also release yourself from them. And you move on. Because if you've done all you can, that what does the scripture say? If it's at all possible, be at peace with all men. That lets me know it's not always possible. And we have to release ourselves when it's not possible, okay? That you release yourself from the people who are railing on you, who you can never be good enough for. You release them. Release them to God. And let God take care of them. And, and say, Lord, don't hold anything against them on my part. If they go down, let it be of their own doing. I release that. I, I forgive them. I give that back to you, God. Then he can do what only he can do and maybe reach them one day, which would be great. So we have to be sensitive. We have to buy that person a coffee or take coffee to an elderly neighbor that lives alone and visit a while and let them talk. I, I'm telling you, when I'm with my mother, she talks, 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 and I love it, and I let her talk. And I don't care if she's told me that, that same story 5,000 times. I don't care. Let her talk. That's love. You know, that's kindness. That's saying, you know, and, and I've had other people say, well, you, you don't need to agree with them when they're not, when they're not correct and they're not telling. In her mind, that's the reality. So I'm going to let her be. I'm going to let that be. You have to let it be. Mm-hmm. It was just hope. And she was in a situation where she couldn't go anywhere else. She was in a home, Marla is the one you're talking about, right? The, she was in a home where she, the movie, oh, yeah, she needed him. She needed him to help fix things. She needed him to teach her how to drive. He had a car and she didn't. So she just kind of, it was a little bit of a different situation. She really did need him to go to the doctor, you know, things like that. And, and so she was like, well, let me love him and see what happens. And so, in an abusive situation, you have to, you have to remove yourself. You have to. Yes. Yep. If someone is 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 actively causing you harm, especially physical harm, you need to get out of that situation. And you need to ask God to help you. And Bishop is saying yes, okay? So I got Bishop on board with that. Sister Willette. Yes. They are our yes. Right. Physical is visible and it'll heal. But the verbal and the spiritual and the emotional and the financial harm, if they got their thumb on you, you can't do anything with, you can't even breathe without, you can't even go buy groceries, you know, without begging. That's, you got to get out of that situation. That's not God's will for you to remain there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She's very lucky to have had you to stay. Keep praying with her. <coughs> Praise God. Three little boys and doing well. Look at never give up. Right. That's right. You know, there's, there's a, um, over the years, there's been husbands and wives in our church that I knew there were some that were abusive, and I would tell that lady, you know, you probably need to get to a safer place. And then there were some where the husband may have been going through a trauma. Yeah, he was mean, okay? Yeah, he was, he did things that didn't make sense. He did stupid things. But Nobody understood when I looked at that wife and said, just hang on. 
just hang in there. It'll be better. Just keep praying. Just keep, just keep doing what you can do, and God will do the rest. Just hang in there. He's been through a lot. And I had others that didn't understand that about me, and they would say, you know, that she just needs to get out. And I would say, no, she needs to pray. She needs to hang in there. She needs to be, she needs to be strong. She needs to hold on. She needs to have long-suffering. She needs to have forbearance. Um, she needs to have love. She needs to have kindness. She needs to have gentleness. She needs to show every fruit of the Spirit that she possibly can because there's a trauma there that he didn't bring on himself, okay? And, and trauma will do things to you and cause you to do stupid things. Trauma will cause you to, to just do dumb stuff. But we as the church have to be different. We have to see with eyes in the Spirit because it was the Spirit that was, I would go and there were times when I would say, Lord Jesus, I just want to tell her to take her stuff and go. But the Holy Ghost would not let me alone. And the Holy Ghost would say, no, you need to ask me. You need, to, you need to seek me about this. You need to seek me on this. So that is why the Holy Spirit is so important. That's why we tell you every service, you need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is what's going to give you the answers you need. The Holy Ghost is what's going to give you the right direction. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to us. Even in the church, as people of God, it doesn't always make sense to us. So we got to be careful. Oh, no, no, no. Years ago, but God, thank God he's changed. Thank the Lord. Absolutely. So I'm going to end with kindness today. We're going to talk a little more about this, but be kind everywhere you go. Be kind to grandparents who are helping raise their grandchildren. Give them a break. Go do something for them. Take them a, a cake. Take them a meal. Just do anything that you can do. Help a teacher. Lord, have mercy. Help a teacher. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Help a teacher. Take her a spa gift certificate or whatever, because Lord knows what they have to put up with these days. My goodness, leave quarters at a laundromat for a, a mama. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever not had money to wash your clothes in a laundromat? Leave quarters in a laundromat for a mama that needs to wash her clothes or go up, go check out, go ride by a laundromat. I don't even use a laundromat anymore. But there have been times when I thought, you know what, maybe I should just go to the laundromat and see who's there today and give them some change. You don't ever know. Let the, let the Spirit speak to you and be kind and spread that kindness. I've watched Bishop and I've watched our young pastor who did not have the money to do it, buy people's groceries and gas and lots of other things. And, and they didn't really have it to give, but they gave of what they had. That's, and we're going to have to do that right now for our friends in North Carolina especially. For the friends in the upstate of South Carolina, especially the people in Florida, my goodness, they have lost everything. But love them. Love the drug addict. Love the person. Um, donate towels or food to an animal shelter. I mean, even, even animals. Be kind. Just show kindness. Show gentleness. We're going to be talking more about other things today, but we're going to end with kindness. So I challenge you this week. Look for somebody that you can be kind to. Look for somebody that you can show kindness to, all right? That, and, and they're usually cranky. They're usually the crotchety people. They might not be very receptive to your love, but be, be loving anyway. Be stubborn with your love, okay? So... My goodness... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Being, yeah. Right. 
Absolutely. They are. Yeah. Pray for our linemen, because all my brothers, nephews, brothers-in-law, they are all linemen. So pray for them, because I know what they go through. But they really are. It's terrible. Mm Mm-hmm. On stilts. So let's go and let's worship. Let's show kindness this week. Let's show forbearance, long-suffering. All right. Fruit of the Spirit.